You're listening to Being Autistic. I'm your host, Shelly, and I am a 50-year-old woman sharing my experiences about what it's like to grow up knowing I was different but not knowing why, how I learned I was on the autism spectrum, and what it's like to be autistic. Hello, everyone. In this episode, I'm going to talk about autism as a disability. So the question is, is autism a disability? There are so many different opinions about this. It's actually quite controversial. So I just wanted to give my two cents about it. And the first thing I want to say is, yes, the the government, I guess in, in the United States, I don't know, but maybe, I think other places too, actually do recognize autism as a disability because it was at, it was added to the list of disabilities that you can qualify for um, disability insurance. And I don't know exactly what year that was added, but I'm pretty sure it was within the last five or 10 years. But so if you have a, an official diagnosis of autism, you can pursue getting monthly payments for disability. And I am on the side of where I do think that that's a good thing. However, in this episode, I'm gonna give different viewpoints because I actually made a post about this on Facebook recently and I got a lot of different opinions about it and that was what helped me to realize I, that I needed to do an episode about this. A lot of people wonder, you know, if they have autism, are they disabled? Um, so what I've learned, I'm gonna general, I'm gonna give a general um, consensus here. Most autistics that I have talked to, they don't want to say that they have a disability. They don't want to think of themselves as disabled. And that's completely valid. If you have autism, you have the right to view your autism and yourself the way that you want. Nobody is forcing anybody to say that they're disabled or to say that they're not disabled. It's a lot like how you word it. When you tell people that you're autistic, do you say, I am an autistic person or I am a person with autism? There are two completely different viewpoints. And those two viewpoints also tie into this topic because, you know, it's depends on your personal situation, you know, how you feel about it. If you are someone that, if you want to feel empowered, you would say, I am autistic and it's not a disability, it's, it's a different ability. I've heard that said too. It, we're just different and so it's not a disabling thing. And then there's the people that say, I am a person with autism, as if they're saying that they have a condition that's like a separate thing from them. And, and those people would probably also say that they have a disability. And of course, there's a lot of gray area in these. It's not, I'm a black and white person. I mean, that's one of my flaws. I can't really see the gray areas a lot of times. And so I tend to go to the extremes with things. And I say, either you're disabled or you're not, but there are so many gray areas. And I'm glad that I, you know, really interest, got interested in this topic because if I hadn't asked people about it, I would not have realized that a lot of people have, you know, gray areas of what, what they feel. Like a lot of people actually identify with both. They do recognize that it is a disability, but they also, you know, they're proud. They are empowered. They just want, they want to advocate that they just need accommodations and they're just different. It's not really a disability. So there's so many gray areas to this. And so the next thing I wanted to get into was, so if it is a disability to you, what exactly would that mean? Would that mean that you are powerless to your autism traits and you kind of live your life based around that? And I'm on the side of, I guess I shouldn't say side because there's truths to all of these aspects, but I lean towards the the feeling i just feel that i i can't get rid of these autistic traits and so i live my life in a way that i'm in control and the autism isn't so for example i work from home because 
work has always been the number one problem in my life. And I didn't know why until I was diagnosed just like four months ago. <laughs> so in that sense, I do feel disabled when it comes to work because I am not able to work with customers. I am not able to work on the phone. I am not able to work under bright lights and loud noises. I am not able to devote 40 hours a week to anything. And so th I do feel like I'm not in control and I do feel disabled in that sense. Um, so other ways that you, you know, you could kind of control your life is to control your environment, like your house, like, you know, the lights in your house, the noises in your house. And to me, that is, you know, that's like accommodating yourself to your environment. And that does not really feel like a disabling situation, but that's because if you're able to control your environment, of course, you're not going to feel disabled. But if you're in an environment that's completely overstimulating you and causing meltdowns, to me, that is an example of, you know, it's, it's disabling to be there because you are unable to be there and handle that situation. So a lot of people, yeah, they really don't like that word disabled. And maybe there are better ways we could word it um, because dis the word disabled actually has a stigma of people that have physical disabling things like they're blind, they have no legs or things like that. And so this brings into the thing of it being a invisible disability. All sorts of chronic illnesses are in invisible disabilities and they really make, make it different because people don't often believe you. They, they can't see it, so they think you're just making stuff up. And that in itself is traumatizing. If if you start crying at your job and you're freaking out and you just need to go into a dark corner and be by yourself, people are going to not see that as a good thing. They're, they're going to see that as you can't handle your job, then why are you here? You know, and that's a very disabling situation, I think. So the flip side of this is that we are differently abled, which is a situation or a condition, I guess, where you would need accommodations. So accommodations would be basically just changing things about the environment to help you. And that's not always possible in some jobs. Like there's no way that you can work in a factory 12 hours a day with bright lights and loud noises for an extended period of time. There's no way that you can get accommodations with that. Yeah, you can wear earplugs, but they don't always let you listen to music. <laughs> so you sometimes can just put earplugs in, but you're, you're still hearing the loud noises. It's constant loud noises. Earplugs don't stop the sound. They just muffle it a little bit. And the bright lights, sure, you can, they might let you wear sunglasses in there, but most of the time in factories, they make you wear safety glasses. And those are not tinted because you need to be able to see what you're doing. So I really don't think any factory would let you wear sunglasses. So, and they don't let you cut your hours because they run with shifts. So your shift would work from 3 to 11 p.m. or whatever. And then the next shift would work 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And the next one, you know, they have a set number of people that have to be there during those hours. So I do not know of any way that you can get accommodations at a job like that. Um, a lot of jobs probably would let you do some sort of thing, but I've never experienced that. So yeah, the whole thing about work, I've talked in extensively about that in my episode about the struggles that I've had with work. And even in the last episode that I recorded I, where I talked about masking, I feel like work itself is just masking. And that's why I've struggled so much with work in my life because that's where I feel the most differently abled because I am not able to do that environment for an extended period of time in the same way that other people can. So I do believe that I think, I think that the thing here is that the word disability is just a hot topic and it's a button for, it's a hot button, you know, it's a trigger, but I, here's where my autistic traits come in. 
I say these words, even though they could be triggering or stigmatized, but it's just a word, really, and it's really what you mean. It's not really... So when I say disability, I'm not... It's not a derogatory thing. It's a. It's just a fact. It's just a disable, like not able. I am not able to do certain things. And so I'm the kind of person that I don't look down on people that have disabilities. I don't look down on anybody that wants to say that they have a disability because I say that too. However, there are a multitude of ways that you can overcome the whole condition. Um, so some people are able to overcome it better than others. Let's take an example. So this was the first idea that I had when I first thought of making this episode. Actually, somebody suggested that I make an episode about people that are autistic. They're actually able to make an amazing life for themselves and they're successful. They're, you know, and so that, that the person I'm talking about is Temple Grandin and she's probably the most famous autistic person. She's an, a really strong advocate and she has done TED Talks and I think she might even have a book. Um, she's like the model autistic person and the thing is i believe this is my personal opinion here that it it really depends on your um so what's the word i'm trying to say your selection of traits that you have it's gonna be different for everybody and i think people like temple grandin that are able to have a full-time job and they've been doing it for their most of their life and they can talk to crowds they're very outspoken and they you know i'm not quite sure if she is an introvert or an extrovert but she's a very different example of autism than someone like me for example i do not want to be on camera i do not want to talk to a crowd of people i i struggle with work um, so very different examples here and so the thing is it's going to depend on your traits that you have so I think there's ways to work around some of them of course because we don't want to be completely powerless to autism um, we don't want to just you know turn into hermits and never leave our house never talk to people and you know because that would probably not do us any favors um, we, I think balance is key here. So when it comes to disability or things like that, I think there are ways to focus on the things that you are good at and let those things balance out the, the things that you are unable to do. So my example would be, I don't like dealing with people or the, the public. So what I do in my businesses is, you know, podcasts website, YouTube channel, and Etsy. I have an Etsy shop. So I create things that are printable things and, you know, that's something that I can do and I'm good at that, that I don't have to deal with people. That's not going to stress me out. It, it's not masking at all because I'm doing the things that I'm comfortable with. So in that sense, disability kind of disappears a little bit because if you downplay your the things that stress you out and you highlight the things that you are good at then the balance will tip and and people might see you as you're not disabled at all look at how really good you are at all of these things that you're good at you know so that's what i i wanted to i wanted to really talk about that point because yeah um so there's so many gray areas of this like there's so many ways that you could just kind of bypass the whole disability stigma and i need i need to work on that i admit i'm but i think that's because i'm still processing when you first learn that you're autistic you really need to go through that processing stage where you do kind of feel like a victim like why didn't i know sooner why is my brain like this why you know just you do feel like a victim at least i did and and here's the other thing i have felt this way my whole life and i know it's a disempowering mindset to have but i've always been a negative person in the sense that i can't handle when things go wrong it's 
and that makes me feel like a victim too. Like, you know, like here's an example. I'm looking right now at my ceiling, which is dripping water all over my living room floor. And I have a bucket under it that's half full. And it's been doing that. Well, this is not the first time it's dripped, but it's this is the worst that it's ever dripped. And then I turn my head and I look to the other side and my kitchen sink will not drain. It's completely, the sink is full and it won't go down. I've tried so many different things to get it to go down, but I can't afford a plumber. So I've got water issues everywhere. And that makes me feel like a victim. Like if I was not autistic, I would be able to have a good job and I would be able to have a house instead of a trailer that's not falling apart. And so in that sense, I do feel like autism kind of controls my life and I do feel disabled against it. And I mean, I've always felt this way about my life, like trying to figure out why I can't get meaningful relationships to stay, why I can't find a job that I can tolerate, you know, why I struggle with so many things in my daily living. Um, so I've heard that that is a trait of autism, that you focus on the negative. And, and my reasoning for that is that I believe that we need to be realistic. Someone else in my situation would look at all these water issues and say, well, at least I have a roof over my head. You know, at least I have a place of my own and I'm not homeless or living with my parents, you know. So there are always ways to look at things differently. And that's kind of the theme of this episode is to look at your disability in a different way and not feel so powerless to it. And like I said, I need to work on that because I, and that's partly why I started this podcast because I think that by talking about it, it will help me. And I, I'm certainly getting the, the positive vibes from the people in the autism groups that I'm in. You know, they're, they're like, I'm very strong and empowered and I'm proud of being autistic and I find ways to overcome my problems. And that's the extreme end that I hope that someday I can get to. And I don't feel quite there at all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's that. And so the, the whole thing that I wanted to get across here is the two extremes of this is I'm disabled and I can't do anything and I'm powerless. And then the other extreme is I'm going to take control and make my life be the way I want, regardless of what's in my way. And I think we should all strive to be towards that end or at least in the middle, you know, um, it's, it's probably okay to be in the middle. I think it's being realistic. I'm a realistic person and that's why I tend to lean towards the negative because I'm looking around seeing negative things and I'm just stating a fact. My ceiling is dripping and I probably have mold in there again because I had mold removed before but the, the roof was not fixed properly, I guess. So it's all a matter of perspective, I guess, and gratitude and working with what you have. And that's a really good <laughs> metaphor for life in general is just to work with what you have. Maybe it's, maybe it is a disability, but it's also a, a different ability. You have abilities that other people don't. Everybody has something that other people don't. So it's, it's good to focus on those things and focus less on the things that are not serving you. So that is the message of this episode. And I hope you got some benefit out of this. And I thank you for listening. And I will see you in the next week's episode.